A couple of steps forward, a dozen back. Might as well be TNA's tagline at this point. Under Scott Dia uh, Scott Dea uh, Dea Mori Dea Mor Dea Mori Well under this guy Impact Wrestling a largely unwatched joke gradually turned itself around enough to not be scuffed at this decade. With a great world champ in Josh Alexander, the stench of everything from the Hogan Bishop era to the Tessa Blanchard catastrophe gave way just enough that many non-diehard fans of the show were ready to maybe, just maybe, give it another go. The reveal of the return to the TNA rebrand was well received, as was putting the world title on Moose. And then it all went south. Scott, that guy, fired. TNA Sacrifice 2024 riddled with tech issues and now this week TNA Rebellion riddled with injuries and bad booking. I'm not going to review the show because who would have time to listen to that? Just know that Josh Alexander, Jake Something and Hammerstone are all way too awesome for this show and it's perplexing WWE haven't jumped on all three just yet. The main event, Dolph Ziggler, a great wrestler, buried in mid-card purgatory for pretty much his whole career, gets a world title shot against Big Bad Moose. Dolph's family are in the audience. He's fairly over, I guess. Maybe, just maybe, he could be a decent babyface champ for TNA. At least for a little while, while they build up newer, more homegrown acts. Nope, Moose retains. That's okay though, Moose is a beast with legit athlete credibility thanks to his NFL career. If not Ziggler though, then who? Josh Alexander could always re-enter the title picture? Hammerstone could bounce back with a few wins and make the challenge? Nope, Jeff Hardy's brother, that's who. Now look, I understand in 2016, a lot of people found broken Matt Hardy hilarious, but it was hilarious to laugh at, not with. Hardy's Tommy Wiseau-like acting and storytelling was at best a parody of professional wrestling, not fit for the main event scene regardless of fan interest. It was also an anchor on Jeff Hardy, one of the greatest baby faces ever, a man who would have been as big a star as John Cena back in the day if it wasn't for just how much he loves drugs and alcohol. And hey, I think we've all had to choose between the responsibilities of a promising entertainment career and crystal meth at least once in our lives, I know I have. Brother Nero turned main event Jeff, former WWE and TNA top dog, into a comedy side act to his less famous brother. Something he never really recovered from, never returning to upper card relevancy anywhere he's gone, despite being one of the best wrestlers of the 21st century. And no, that is not hyperbole, Jeff Hardy was awesome for many years, even with his seemingly countless demons. Anyways, fast forward a bit. The shtick bummed in WWE with Woken Matt Hardy, a lighter, more WWE-friendly, neutered version of the gimmick. Remember when I said it was an anchor to Jeff Hardy less than a minute ago? This time, it was an anchor to a man WWE shafted almost every year he was there. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt wasn't necessarily the most talented technical wrestler in the world, but he's still a monumental fumble on WWE's part. The promos, the charisma, the creativity, even the scary hillbilly look. He was really interesting and could have, should have, would have been a big main event draw with better booking, either as cult Bray Wyatt, you know, the original character, or as the fiend Bray Wyatt, that horror movie character he adopted. But nope, fresh off a horribly booked WWE Championship reign and moved to Raw, Wyatt eventually found himself in a strictly mid-card feud with Woken Matt, where, eventually, he became second fiddle to the guy. A year on from losing the big belt at WrestleMania, and Wyatt didn't even have a match. 
Just a surprise appearance at the pre-show to help Matt Hardy out. Yikes. Talk about draining the clout out of better talents than yourself. Speaking of which, do you know who else Broken Matt bummed against? None other than Y2J Chris Geriatric. AEW, the next stop for this ludicrous oddball character who dresses badly, has a skunk-like haircut, and laughs in a way almost as fake as the legit butcher's weird laugh. <laughs> Saw him attack Jericho with a drone or something? I would have gone back and rewatched it for research here, but uh, I didn't want to, so... What I do remember is it being unbelievably bad, and yet more proof that Chris Geriatric has always been an unhealthy presence in AEW. Can you imagine having a new upstart company where Kenny Omega, Hangman Page, Cody Rhodes, and John Muxley are all in their primes, all very over with fans, and you go with the bloated has-been version of that guy from Fuzzy as your first world champ. Unbelievable. So this feud was so bad, so bad in fact, that Matt Hardy dropped the character entirely and went on to have his brains turned into scrambled eggs by Sammy Guevara. And then he just kind of twiddled his thumbs until his way more famous, way cooler brother lost his mind and did a surprise runner on WWE. So now, here we are. Matt Hardy is gone from AEW. We're never getting the old man version of the Hardys versus Edge and Christian. And he's back in TNA, the one promotion that largely humored his weird character work and actually made some money out of it. And if he were back to be a niche act largely away from the main event scene, that would be one thing. But he runs in right after the main event, and we're meant to believe that him, in the state he's in now, riddled with injuries, riddled with chronic pain, playing a funny guy act, is some kind of monumental threat to six foot five, 300 pounds, former NFL offensive lineman Moose. WWE fans love our truth. He's a funny guy. Do you make him a threat to Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes right now? That's what you're looking at. TNA is retreading all of its old errors, it seems, including treating former WWE mid curvers miles past their prime like royalty. This goofball persona is nonsensical. It's try-hard. It's outlived its sell-by date. And while it may have had a cult following initially, it's not one that lasted past that initial TNA run. Between this and his beyond embarrassing social media antics over the years, presenting Matt Hardy as a hotshot to the main event is pure, unadulterated Bush League. Not only is the character silly, but Hardy's career has been plagued by borderline jubber status ever since Lita cheated on him with Edge. Remember that? when he slagged them and WWE off in loads of interviews, only to then come back and get buried to hell in 2005 and especially in 2006. Man, somehow, despite being the wronged party, he was the only one who got punished. And it just about permanently hampered his kayfabe credibility. If by some anti-miracle, TNA are indeed dumb enough to let him win the gold, well, LOL TNA will be back in full swing quicker than you can say Matt Hardy strongly dislikes mustard. <laughs>